I am the worst fisherman in all of Canada. When a fish shows up in your screen, actually that's a fish right there. And I probably should try to catch that. Truth of the matter is Luke's already caught more than he can eat. So I'm gonna steal one of his fish. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Andy from Bone Apple Acres. I'm not sure why I'm whispering. We're not hunting. We're doing the other Northern Ontario pastime in the winter. We're out ice fishing. Um, can do something a little different today for a video. All the goats are milk, milked, the rabbits are fed, chickens are taken care of, and we're gonna see if we can't catch a couple fish. Myself, not a very good fisherman, not a very into it fisherman per se, but I love eating fish. So I brought two ringers along with me. I've got Chris Bain from Junction Tackle and my brother who outfishes me 15 to one. So hopefully he catches a bunch and I can eat them. In a miraculous turn of events, I've already caught a fish today. Um, we're actually out fishing whitefish. If you've ever fished with me, that's a borderline miracle that I catch anything other than potentially my father. I am the worst fisherman in all of Canada. Shockingly, Luke's already caught three or four at this point. Bane's playing with a bunch of his own tackle and has had a bunch of strikes, but I'm not sure if he's put anything on the ice yet. But I'll keep you up to date. I do, I do wanna go over this <laughs> machine that my brother let me borrow. Anybody that's a real fisherman out there, forgive my ig ignorance because like I said, I'm, I'm not much of a fisherman. Basically what we have here, as far as I can tell, I'll try to show you, is this big like mat of color and a solid line is the bottom of the lake. This right here, actually this little line is my lure. So you can actually see when it moves up and down. And what'll happen is when uh, when a fish shows up in your screen, actually that's a fish right there. And I probably should try to catch that. All right, I didn't catch it. That actually may improve my odds if I am not holding the fishing rod. Truth of the matter is Luke's already caught more than he can eat. So I'm gonna steal one of his fish. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Did you get that on camera? I don't know, I looked away I think. <laughs> Wasn't letting that fucker get away. Got him. Got a wet hand now. Got sunny huh? Yeah. Cool. Right on. How many is that for you now? Just four. Just four. I lost a couple more. Yeah, I'm not doing that good. Come on, you. It's round and round the hole. You're yeah, getting winded. Come on. <laughs> oh, I got him in the... There he is. Any words of wisdom? Nope. None. I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> so you still all over it. Get it on. on. Right Fish on. on. Pull my transducer out. Most of you guys that are watching any of the stuff that I'm putting out know this cat anyway. This is Chris Bain hey. from Junction Tackle. He's supplied me with more fish than probably I've deserved <laughs> over the years. <laughs> I can get a wet hand here. Ready. So these are pretty standard white fish for Northern Ontario, but that's a beauty. Yeah. They're great eating fish. And gotta be on the table. Nice. Well done, sir. Well done. Beautiful. What are you using? Do you care well, to right mention? now I, I we're, we're seeing to get a good reaction bite on the, the Beal Vibrato. It's not a lure I make, but it's definitely a hot lure. And this is the 10 gram uh, shiner, I believe. 
and you just got to keep it moving these inland fish they just uh, they're a little aggressive so you can get them going unlike uh, the Great Lakes fish they're a little more finesse but uh, yeah that's uh, my first of the day you guys have been smoking me so I got a thing or two to learn I guess <laughs> <laughs> one thing I am good at is cleaning fish so I'll show you how I clean uh, clean up the white fish and we'll cook it and show you a nice meal of white fish at some point here All right, we got back from uh, the lake, the secret lake that I'm not allowed to tell you guys about. And uh, I'd like to start by thanking Chris Bain. He gave me all his fish. I did mention before, and maybe I guilted him into it a little. I mentioned before that he has given me fish in the past. He's very generous when it comes to that type of thing. He's a really good fisherman, and I think he feels a little bad for me. So he gives me all of his fish. <laughs> But I'd like to thank Chris Bain from Junction Tackle for um, basically supplying the vines with fish tonight. Um, the other thing, Shannon gave me a crash course on how to use a camera and she said a bunch of random stuff but basically you shouldn't put a camera in your pants is what I've gathered. <laughs> okay, let's bleed some fish. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use one of these little wrap knives from uh, Canadian Tire. They come on sale for like $9.99. Even if they aren't good, which they always seem to work fine for me, they're $9.99. How bad can they be, right? We can put a description below. You can order them off of Amazon. But yeah, they come on sale all the time. They're a good little knife. Up to you. Okay, I would say the only thing different with a whitefish than um, all your trout species and pickerel, walleye, you know, they're the same thing, but if anyone's American watching, is they have really thick, heavy scales. So you can really dull your knife quick on their scales, and you're never gonna cook them skin on without scaling them. And I hate scaling fish, it makes a huge mess. So the one thing you gotta watch, skin's gotta come off, and you basically gotta the back cut that you do, I always do it kind of from the inside, just so you don't dull your knife on the first fish. So I'll just do it and you guys can watch. So I'm gonna do uh, like a cut across behind the gill plate here. It comes in the exact same as any standard fish, right? We're gonna come in here. Then I like to kind of follow the back down. You see all those scales bunching up? If you come in from the outside, like if you run your knife this way, some people like to do that, it really will dull your knife in a rush. But basically, once you get to about here, I always say, like the anal fin, just go right through. There's no bones past here anyway. And then just push down so that you're pushing down onto uh, the spine, I guess, like the middle of the fish this part here, that bone. There's no bones past here. And then you just follow your rib cage, okay? I always like to just kind of follow it down. There's some guys on TV that are gonna do this really fast. I'm not that good. I don't know how if I'm holding this so you can see it or not. So I just kind of get it laying out there. Okay, so that's the rib cage right there. Pretty clear of any sort of flesh or meat that we want. Obviously we want to get as much as we can. Then I just actually split the, I don't know, middle fins? I don't know, what are those called? I don't know. I don't know, those middle two fins. I split them anyway. And then you end up with a really nice chunk here. At this point, I'm gonna take, there's a bone that kinda comes up here off of this middle fin. And I know there's people out there gonna say, that's the whatever fin you should know that. 
Just tell us in the comments below what, yeah. is, what, what everything's called. I'm sure I should know what that is. There is um, pin bones, okay? Just like all the trout and, um, and pickerel. Basically right here, you have a whole row of pin bones. I actually like to skin them first. Like, I find that if I split that, not maybe on a smaller fish like this, but on a on a bigger one, if I take the pin bones out first, it sometimes gets harder to skin them. I should not have used. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to make this look better on a different skinning. <laughs> okay, and then I just start in. I kind of hold the tail with my fingernail or whatever. Start in, and then just follow the skin. And I get a hold of her, so you got something to pull against, kind of. I don't even really move my knife, I guess I just kind of move the skin. And then she pops off, and that's a skinless fillet. Chuck that in the sink. Okay, now the last thing before you portion it is we got to get rid of these these bones. Um, some people leave them, leave them in, and actually they pretty much cook away, but I got little kids and I like to get rid of them. So what I do is I just kind of feel down, feel it down until I stop feeling them, which is always right about here. You can actually see them too. They're kind of like white and they stick up. So then I just make a kind of a line as close as I can to them without, I don't want to lose much meat if I can avoid it. Chris Bain worked hard for these fish. I don't want to have to lose any meat. <laughs> so then if you don't feel them very well, they do have that center line you can follow. I usually try to get inside it a little bit just, just to cut down on how much meat you're going to end up losing. Okay, and that right there, it's kind of a shame like you, there is a, a chunk of meat there, but it is just full of bone. So I usually just discard that. Then that's a boneless filet. You can cut her up into portions and turn on the deep fryer. Now we're gonna do that a whole bunch more times. Like one of them soy chefs or whatever. What do they call sushi chef? Hoyo! Oh, 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 right in the hummus! Oh. I can do better. Watch, 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 watch. Wait for it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some deep frying or slightly deep, slightly shallow frying fish. But I wanted to try, I've been giving my wife to give me, for giving my wife grief because I wanted her to give me some of the Everglades seasoning. I've been watching um, two different videos, or two different YouTube guys. And the one um, is the Arms family, and he put the Everglades. The, Everglades, yeah, the Everglades seasoning on all kinds of deer meat and fish, and it looks awesome. And the other guy is from Deer Meat for Dinner, and he, What's his name? Robert Arrington, right? Yeah. And the stuff that guy cooks looks awesome. So I wanted to really try this. So we're deep frying this stuff because kids wanted it. And that's how we cook it a lot of times. But I'm going to cook some for myself that's just going to be straight up uh, pan fried. Oh, I like that. Make some for me. Okay. So I'll make some for you guys as well. And I'm going to try... Um, well, this is the one that they recommend. It's Everglades Fish and Chicken. That seems like it's made for fish and chicken. <laughs> but the one I wanted to try was Everglades Heat. It looks like it would be right up my alley. I like uh, a little bit of spice in my food and my fish. And I'm gonna give it a whirl. See how she goes here. Gonna be good. Smells good. 
That's good. That is really good. Is it? It's hot, but. Once you give it a second. Give him a liberal dose. Give him pretty good on the fish and chicken one. Something tells me this one's gonna be just a little bit better. Got a little bit of kick. Everglades fish and chicken, and we have Everglades heat. That's all it is. Well, let's see. Actually, fish and. Chicken. Fish and chicken one? Yeah. I'm going with the heat. I like that one better. I put like seasoning salt or something like that on our fish. And that's fine. But this is legitimately better than what I make. And they don't sponsor us or anything like that. Definitely don't. I, I have like 100 subscribers. <laughs> Nobody sponsors me. But I would say if you're into eating fish, actually this would be awesome on this would be awesome on red meat even. Like deer, moose. You will see me next month put this on deer and moose, guaranteed. And it is really good on chicken and fish. I would almost it's definitely good on fish. It's the only thing I've had it on. That one is almost the same flavor, just no spice. So if you're into spice, go with that. If you're not into spice, go with that. They're both good. Hit that subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell. So you don't miss any new videos. So you don't miss any new videos and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.